in class we were talking about the spine, or about the spine, and injuries associated with it, more specifically the lumbar pain. What are the underlying causes? Obesity, abdominal adiposity, lack of physical uh, activity, poor posture. Why would these things cause lumbar pain? So does abdominal adiposity cause torque on the lumbar? <laughs> okay, since the main question has to deal with the torque caused by abdominal adiposity, we're going to define torque and give a demonstration. Torque is defined as the turning effect created by a force about an axis, and the formula to find torque is radius times force. So for a demonstration, we're going to talk about, we're going to take an eraser and put a ruler on top of it, and this is going to be the axis of rotation. We're going to put four pennies one inch away from the axis of rotation and one penny four inches away. Each of the, pe um, the pennies are going to represent force and the radius, and this is going to have a stronger force, but it's not as far away, and it's going to balance out by being this force being farther away from the axis of rotation. So to measure torque, there's a uh, philosophy known as angular displacement. And angular displacement is the degrees or radians measured from this tip of the bat and at the hands. They are the same and it differentiates between linear displacement because linear displacement is, say this moves 10 inches and the hands only move 3. And that angular displacement would be the actual degrees made. Both the end of the bat and the um, bottom of the bat are both going to move 90 degrees. But, but center of mass is the, isn't exactly a fixed point. For example, with a sprinter, um, when they're down on their starting blocks, the center of mass actually exits the body and is down in front of them. Then as they explode out of their um, starting position, the center of mass comes back up inside the body. The perpendicular distance for, between the axis and the line of force. So when a person has excess, excess weight on one side of the body, the center of mass comes forward and can create a moment arm here, which will pull the body system forward. Anterior pelvic tilt is the forward rotation of the pelvis around a horizontal axis. As you can see, it rotates about the insertion of the femur into the hip. A uh, normal anterior pelvic tilt would be about 30 degrees, and this can vary a couple degrees forward or backward depending on your genetic makeup. But when you start to get to a tilt of about 40 degrees, that's when you start to have um, low back problems in your lumbar. Uh, some reasons for this are lax muscles, where your ab muscles are tight but your back muscles are weak. Also being overweight or pregnant, your stomach will fall out and start to lean over, and uh, also fashion, wearing high heels is a problem. Um, some other more serious causes would be a uh, spondylolisthesis, which is where the vertebrae actually sits uh, forward anteriorly above the other vertebrae, or even congenital, um, you can be born with hip problems. Okay. This is our experiment to prove or disprove rather um, abdominal adiposity that is relevant for uh, lumbar pain. Um, right now, this is set up so there is this level. This right here is it's a, at a level state. And we're going to add the weight and see how many degrees just a, this little bit of weight right here will tilt the pelvis. You go level with the actual level and then find the angle of how much degrees and it's reading about 12 degrees of anterior tilt. So I guess it seems reasonable that a little extra weight in, on your front side um, causes a torque in the lumbar. 